Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to have a look at what's in this box. I mean, it's obviously a 135th scale Italeri Auto Blender AB40 Ferroviaria. I'm probably saying that wrong. But what I mean is, in this video I'll be having a slightly more in-depth look at the contents of the box for this kit, but not actually constructing it. I will begin building this model on stream soon, and there will be a video about the actual build in the future, so please do check those out when they are available. For now, let's check out the box and what's inside of it. The box itself is pretty simple. It looks like a lot of other Italeri boxes with information along the top, including the kit number, which is helpful if you want to look it up on Scalemates or something like that, the scale being 135th, it also tells us there are German and Italian decals, and that rail tracks are included. There's also obviously a picture on the front, and as you can see, this is an early auto blender with the, I believe, 8mm machine guns. It's also the kind that could go on rails, which is what I believe ferroviaria means. You're just going to have to put up with me slaughtering that word. You can see that this vehicle has been modified for railway use, with sandboxes and guard things to knock stuff off the rails before it can get under the wheels. On this side of the box you can see three pictures of the built and painted model, which looks pretty nice in my opinion. There's also some other information including the year, apparently this kit is from 2007, and according to Scalemates it includes new parts. It's based on the 2005 release, which was an AB41. I believe that means a different armament and no railway options. The other side of the box is a bit less interesting to look at, though it does include some information about the vehicle. The short sides of the box are pretty simple. It has more or less the same information as the front of the box, though here it also shows us the length of the model, though that seems to be the length of the tracks the vehicle will sit on and not the auto blender itself. That length is 18.5 centimetres, and you can work that out yourself if for some reason you use imperial measurements. The only difference between the short sides of the box is the orientation the information is presented in. This is obviously so that it will be readable when the box is stacked flat or on its side. Inside the box we find instructions, which are very tall. There's also a bag of vinyl tyres, or at least I think they're vinyl, and there are two sets of sprues in their own plastic bags, for a total of four sprues. My guess is the smaller set with the wheels are the new parts for this kit, being that they include rails, and the previous auto blender kits were non-rail versions. There is also a decal sheet, and that's all. I suppose we should take a look at the instructions first. As you can see, like I mentioned before, the instructions are quite tall and they're the fold-out kind, which is not my favourite format. I would prefer a booklet with individual pages, but these are perfectly usable, and some might prefer them. Inside, the first page and a half have sprue diagrams. This is useful if you suspect something is missing from the box. It's not likely, but if you are missing a part you can make sure with this diagram and then take action, which would either be contacting the manufacturer or the place where you bought the kit. The parts you see here, shaded in grey, are not for use on this kit, so they can go straight into the bits box. As we keep going, we see the instructions themselves. These diagrams are fairly simple and large. I guess that's the benefit of the piece of paper itself being rather large. There isn't too much to do in each step, which makes things simple to follow. It also makes it quite easy to see if you've missed or forgotten any of the parts in each step. It can be easy to miss stuff when you've got a whole lot of things going on in one single step, and that shouldn't be a problem when putting this kit together. I appreciate that most of the sub-assemblies are sectioned off into their own boxes. I feel like these instructions will be easy to follow and shouldn't leave me with too many questions when I do start building. However, if there are any problems I'll be sure to point them out in the build video. There were also some very basic painting guides on the final page, but I forgot to take pictures of those and couldn't be bothered setting up the backdrop again, so I guess you'll just have to use your imagination. Here's the decal sheet. Not a whole lot to look at here really, the four crosses are obviously for the German version, and the decals labelled 2 and 3 are for the Italian version. I have no idea what the marking labelled 1 is, it doesn't show up on any of the painting diagrams. 
I'm sure somebody knows though, so let me know in the comments below if you do know. Why not look at the parts now? First, these tyres. These are vinyl or something similar, and they look pretty good to me. There is some nice tread detail and they look very much like tyres, which is what you want in tyres, really. The only issue is they're pretty new looking tyres. I would expect them to look a bit more worn on an auto blender that's been in use, though these will be stowed on the sides of the vehicle, so maybe we can just say that they've got brand new tyres or something. It's fun to make up stories. Here we can see the two identical B sprues. From what I can tell, these have all the parts that make this the rail auto blender, such as the rails, duh, and the rail wheels. These look to be the regular wheel hub parts that have had a rail wheel attached, all in one part. There are also sleepers, or cross tyres as I believe they're called in the US. These are big chunky parts, but most of the sleeper would be hidden under the ballast, so they should look fine once that's applied. I think they look quite good. These two sprues seem to be newer mouldings than the others in this box, though the difference is only two years, and I have no way to tell when these were actually moulded. It could be much later than 2007. I might be rambling a bit, but the point I'm trying to make is, the detailing here is good, neat and crisp. But it doesn't stand out as being any different from the other sprues, and while the parts are good, there are of course mould lines, though for the most part they are quite hard to find. You can see some examples of the mould lines here on the parts labelled 11 and 12. They're not horrendous mould lines by any stretch of the imagination, but they are plainly visible and it would be best to remove them. That shouldn't be too much of a challenge anyway. You can of course see them on some of the other parts here too, but that's pretty much the only thing I can find wrong with these sprues, though I wouldn't really consider it an issue at all. You're probably going to have to remove mould lines no matter what kit you build. The point is, I couldn't find any moulding defects or anything else like that. This here is the A sprue. I guess I've got them out of order because I'm just the worst. Anyway, this sprue contains the turret parts and the frame of the auto blender. It's two years, or at least the tooling is older than the first two sprues, but they look to be the same quality with the same good level of detail. These springs look pretty decent, though you can see that there isn't a whole lot of depth to them, but they won't be super visible on the model anyway, so once they are installed and painted they should look pretty convincing. Also, they don't have a mould line on the spring part, which is an annoyance that I quite often encounter. These parts here, which are the rear sandboxes, do look a bit soft and rounded. I'm no auto blender expert, so I'm not sure if they are meant to be that way or not. They just look a bit odd to me compared to the rest of the parts. Just about everything else here is a lot sharper in detail. The turret bottom part looks like it includes a mounting for a seat. And it does seem like there is some interior detail, so maybe the turret would look okay with the hatches modelled open. Probably better if you can find a crew figure to have poking out of it though. This kit doesn't include one of those. I don't see that as a problem, but some might. Moving on to the fourth and final sprue, sprue C. As you can see, this mostly contains hull details. The things I said about the previous sprues are also true for this one. The parts are nice and neat, though there are mould lines etc. This platey thing here seems to have a bit of flash at the bottom, though I think it might just be because of the way the parts are tapered to a point. We'll see if this is an issue during the build. I don't think it will be though. The rest of the parts do look pretty good, though I can't really think of a whole lot to say about them. The engine deck part looks quite good. I rather like the way the rivet detail looks. It seems as though you'll be able to build this with the engine bay doors open, though it might actually require some modification to the door parts. Also, you would need to add at least part of an engine if you wanted it to look convincing. Personally, I'm not going to go to that effort. The grille detail on some of these parts is actually see-through, which is nice. You may want to paint the inside of the model black because of this, though really once the model is together and painted it should be pretty dark and hard to see inside them anyway. The body of the auto blender is pretty neat, and like I just said, I think the rivet detailing looks pretty good. I can't see anything obvious that's going to need more than a tiny bit of cleanup, and I think these parts are going to go together very nicely. I am anticipating having a good time building this kit, and I haven't seen anything to indicate any issues. 
Not to say that there won't be any issues, I can't predict the future of course, just that none of them are obvious to me. Okay, so there's nothing else in the box, and I like what I see. I think this is going to build up to be a quite nice looking model of what I think is an interesting subject. The Auto Blinder is a strange looking vehicle, and the rail version is, in my opinion, even stranger and more interesting to look at. It's not a model I see very often, and that's one of the reasons I chose to build it. And I think I might paint it as the Italian version, though so far I've not 100% decided. I might paint it pink. I should really build it before worrying too much about that though. I will begin building this on my streams very soon. So if you're interested in watching this being built live, head on over to twitch.tv slash herbert underscore erpaderp, where you'll be able to follow me and be notified when I go live. There will of course also be announcements via Discord and Twitter, so don't miss it. I think it's going to be fun. Once the build is complete I will of course make a video about it. If you're watching this in the future where I've already built it and made the video, there'll be a link in the description and in the upper right corner of the screen. This is the first of this kind of video that I've done. The plan is to only include a brief look at the sprues in the build video and link to this video for those who want a closer look. At the moment I'm only planning on doing this for larger kits like 135th scale, so it's not going to be a weekly thing or anything like that. More a random irregular bonus video type thing. Either way, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Have you built this Auto Belinda kit? If so, have you got any tips or things that I should watch out for? I am interested to know. If you found this video interesting or helpful, be sure to share it with your friends or anybody that might also find it useful. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a member or patron, and all the other things you do on YouTube and social media. Links to all my things including Patreon and my Twitch channel are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.